feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. But it's a Welcome back to another episode of The Shrimp Tank, coming to you virtually from Seattle and the Pacific Northwest. Hey, we are where book smarts and street smarts collide. Uh, we are the entrepreneur podcast just for you. We are excited to have you. Uh, I am here. Uh, I'm Dan Whedon. I guess I should tell you who I am first. I'm Dan Whedon. Uh, I was just testing out James Alberson, my co-host. I was testing out a new teleprompter that for some reason went too fast. So I'm on my own now, brother. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm here with my, my, uh, one of my new pals, James Alberson. We are excited to have Diana Smelland from Port Ludlow Resort uh, here as our guest. We're going to welcome Diana here in just a second. But every one of you needs to know where you can find us. Uh, we are wherever you get your podcasts. We have them on uh, 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 Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, you know what, James, we are ubiquitous wherever you get us. And at, 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 and at the end, you can go to shrimptankpodcast.com slash Seattle, catch every episode, rate us, review us, give us a five, why don't you? We would love to have you watch every single episode. James, uh, we're going to introduce Diana Smelland here from Port Ludlow Resort very, very soon. But here's the deal. We were talking a little bit in the, in the room right before we came on. Uh -huh. uh, we are both golfers. So tell, tell me a little bit. You, you, like to, you like to chase that uh, little white ball around the golf course, do you? Well, I, I try to do as little chasing as possible, although it <laughs> seems to happen every round. Uh, it all depends on, all depends on how, how good I'm feeling. If the sun's out, if everything's perfect. Uh, and maybe if I've had one or two uh, beers from the beer cart, a little, a little libation here or there. You know what? We we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to go play around. In fact, James, I am playing at Port Ludlow, a beautiful course, really? just yeah, just beyond the Hood Canal Bridge. Uh, playing at Port Ludlow on Monday with a couple of business colleagues, so I'm really really excited about that. Uh, Diana, I don't know if I'm going to see you out there, uh, but welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Welcome, Diane. And also, thank you. For, you're going to hear this later. Thank you for being a sponsor. And you you probably are our uh, oldest sponsor uh, going back to, I think, about 2018 when we started having sponsors. Uh, but, you know, listen, we were James and I were just chatting a little bit about golf there and, and uh, how I'm going to be out of Port Ludlow. I saw a post that you had recently on Facebook, I believe. And, and you talk, there's two guys who just got done playing a hundred holes in a day oh. uh, out at Port Ludlow. And look, I've played 36 holes a whole lot of times in my life. I can't even imagine a hundred holes. I, I just can't. Uh, and it got me thinking about you because as, as president of Port Ludlow, you're in charge of, of a, a beautiful resort hotel, restaurant, marina, golf course, uh, property development, there's a whole lot of things shaking over Port Ludlow. You must feel like you're playing a hundred holes every day. How, how does it feel to be running that kind of an operation? Well, luckily uh, when people ask me, what do I do it? I always say I manage great people. Um, and uh, each of those operations does have someone who is the expert and they're uh, managing the business. And, you know, I, get the opportunity to do a little bit like you, James, I get to do some coaching, maybe a little bit of mentoring, sometimes some critical conversations, um, but uh, exceptional people that um, I get to work with. And, and I think that's why I just love coming uh, to work every day. Absolutely. When you surround yourself with, with uh, good people, it makes the job a hundred percent easier, 200 percent easier. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's quite the opposite when, uh, when you surround yourself with uh, people who should not be there. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yeah. So, so Diana, ask, Diana, how many employees? Oh, I'm sorry, James. No, 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 no go right ahead. Ask, how many employees, how many employees, James, you're on debt where you're going to tee off right next. I got honors right now. You got next. Uh, <laughs> how many employees do you have normally out there? And do you need more people? 
Yeah, so um, year round, we uh, have about 80 employees. And um, what was fun on Facebook, I don't know if you saw this, we uh, have a cook in the kitchen who just celebrated his 30th anniversary with the company. And we were talking some stories. And what was fascinating is two other cooks in the kitchen have 26 and 27 years. So um, we, we have a number of employees that have been with us 20 plus years um, and another probably eight or so that have been with us 10 plus years, which is really fascinating. Um, so yes, we're looking for um, our normal summer seasonal help as well as um, some longer term positions. And, um, you know, it's such a great place to come out to. I always tell people, um, your experience here is not just one thing. It's not like I'm coming just to work on the golf course or just at the marina or just a server at the fireside restaurant. Um, your experience is really a resort and it's a Pacific Northwest resort. Um, and so you get to see a little bit of the workings and how things are happening. Um, and we might borrow you. If we're doing a big event done at the end, we might borrow you to work at the end. Or if you're at the end and we're doing a big event elsewhere, um, maybe at the golf course at the marina, we might borrow you. So it's a great opportunity to um, be exposed to uh, many different businesses rather than just one. That's nice. And you've been there, uh, you've been president 15 years or so. Is that correct, Diana? Since 2006. 2006. And, and I'm curious, what, what, what led you there? What, how, how did you end up at, at Port Ludlow Resorts? Yeah, so um, originally uh, I was working for Warehouser in Tacoma and I got married and wanted to have children and I didn't want to be commuting far away. And uh, so I was uh, lucky enough to um, start working with Pope Resources, who um, had an office at that time in Seattle, but they were moving to Paulsbo. And so I live in Paulsbo, and so it was a perfect fit. And then in 2001, Pope Resources sold literally Port Ludlow to um, Port Ludlow Associates. And I came as part of the sale, as many other people. And... Um, then I just kind of, you know, worked my way through um, and had the great opportunity. I was interim president for a year, uh, kind of see how it worked out. And, and it was great. Like I said, I have great people. So, um, you know, it was really nice to um, step into that role. And, and there's been some roller coasters, you know, we've had some up years, some down years and um, COVID has been interesting, but it's actually, um, because we're out in nature, we're small, we're boutique. Um, many of our um, things are outside, you know, outside kayaking, golfing. Um, we have 30 miles of trails. Many of that, uh, much of that is what people are looking for right now. And I think it's so great. We're so close to Seattle, Tacoma, those areas. Um, so it, it's, um, it's been a good year, which is again, why we're looking for people. Um, because we are busy and we have groups coming back, which is really good to see. We're all in compliance under the regulations, you know, following all the guidelines. Um, but, um, you know, we can do that now with some smaller, which is our, our we only have 37 rooms. So, um, you know, that allows us to cater to that smaller group. Well, that's fantastic. You know, you mentioned the longevity of uh, a few of the different employees. It sounds like uh, the, the people who work there feel it's, a, a great place to work. They don't want to leave unless it's a hotel California of some sort. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious, do you have uh, many return uh, people come, you know, to fill these positions you're looking for for summer and, and that sort of thing? Yeah, that's a great question. We do. Um, a lot of times it's um, somebody heading off to college and they'll come back, they'll work summers with us. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it'll be, um, like uh, their grandparents live here. So they'll come spend the summer with their grandparents. We've heard such great stories about how the grandparents had the summer of their lives while their grandkids were working here. And, you know, they were helping them. And it was so great to just really be fully immersed in what they were doing. Um, and uh, so we just love that. But yeah, we used to get them for three of the years that they're going to college. And, and we also have people that, um, maybe just want to work less hours and um, they live in the community or they live close or they're retired, um, you know, and they love to come and work for us. 
which is really great. So we get their, you know, their knowledge, um, but yet they're looking for that perk maybe because you get free golf if you work for us. Um, so you might want to come over. Where, where, do I, where do I get an application? <laughs> Hold on a second. I, I perked up there. You got, you got J, James is now he's standing in line. He's ready. He's ready All to right. go. I'm closing my business. <laughs> Put him out on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, listen, Diana, you know, uh, I, I, Port Ludlow is really a resort. It's, it's an incredible resort. And there's a lot of folks in the greater Seattle, let's say the greater Puget Sound area. And I think, you know, the name like Suncadia that as you start going out towards Eastern Washington and the mountains is known. And why I think people have heard and know Port Ludlow and obviously you've been around a long time. I don't know that people really understand the uniqueness uh, of where you're located, just on the other side of the Hood Canal Bridge. I know that there's an, a small airport nearby. People can people can charter a small plane and fly over there. They can they can uh, take the ferry over to Kitsap County and go over Hood Canal Bridge? But there's something where you are nestled uh, in a wonderful spot, and really only you know less than two hours away from the Greater Seattle area. Talk about the people that are coming there, the businesses that are holding retreats there. What is it that makes Port Ludlow so unique? You know, I, I think it's many of the things you mentioned, but um, it's also um, what I hear from so many people that come to visit us. You know, we're all busy in life. We got 10,000 distractions, many things coming at us. Um, you know, we're always on, we're always moving, doing things. And, and even I think when we're sitting at home, you know, we're, we're still, we're on, we're doing, we're reading, or we're trying to catch up on this, or I'm trying to get this chore done, or listen to news while I'm doing this. Um, and what, I, what I've what i been told um, is people start to cross the Hood Canal Bridge, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, this is, this is like beautiful, it's restful, it's, it's an opportunity to kind of, um, you know, unhook a little bit, even though we have full Wi-Fi and everything else, but it's an opportunity. And I think because the feel of the area kind of gives that to you, um, you do kind of get that slow down. Um, I always think it's really funny. We have no stoplights in Port Ludlow. I always joke that it's the deer that slow us down. Um, we have a couple stop signs. Um, so we, you know, we're big enough to be an area. But um, I, th I think just really that feel of being able to finally relax. I hear a lot of people talk about they can have conversations. Um, they can reconnect with nature. You know, you hear about um, uh, forest bathing. And forest bathing is actually taking a walk in the forest. And all the things that it, um, you know, bathes your body with and soothes you and calms you down and makes you breathe better. And there's a lot of scientific behind that. And I think Port Ludlow, without being in the middle of the forest, gives you a lot of that same feel. Um, many people feel like they're on vacation, but yet we're less than two miles from Seattle. We're less, or excuse me, two hours from Seattle. We're less than an hour and a half from Edmonds. Um, you know, from Kingston, we're 15 minutes. I can get to Silverdale in a half an hour. I can get to Port Orchard 40 minutes. And so, you know, when you realize how close we are and yet you feel like you got away, that's huge. I'm not having to drive. St. Katie is beautiful. The golf courses are great. Um, but I've got to drive, you know, on a highway with a lot of cars. You know, I'm, I'm over, was the mountain pass, got snow, not got snow, where we're less complicated to get to. Literally, it's on the ferry or you can drive around across to Cuminos. Um, and, you, you know, I think when you're here because of all the water and, and the visibility and Customer service is another thing. I hear that constantly. You look at all of our um, reviews, people talking about, you know, what do they appreciate? Uh, I think just because we're small, it's boutique, we have an opportunity to um, really give you that uh, best of friends service. And I think that also makes a difference for people coming. Uh, types of businesses, um, uh, many types, really. We're doing micro weddings. We're doing family reunions. We're doing... Um, corporate retreats. We're doing, um, you know, an office just wants to do something special for their people. Um, and uh, just about any business fits here. 
uh, it, you know, it's, um, it just gives that opportunity to not be distracted and not be in your office or in your home and, and be able to um, really be creative and create things along you know, the way and figure out what you're doing with your company. Diana, I must say, I think my blood pressure just went down 10 points just hearing you talk about uh, what, what happens once I go over the Hood Canal Bridge and what I'm in, in, in store for. Uh, so one last thing, I'm glad you cleared up the forest bathing. Um, uh, it gave me a definition because I was worried I might have some in, uncomfortable <laughs> moments uh, when I came and went, went walking in the forest. Uh, but that all sounds good. Is there one quick thing? And I think we have to go to break. But if there's one uh, one thing in particular that is that Port Ludlow Resorts is is known for, or that you like to really uh, you know plug or point out that that people ultimately care about nowadays, would anything come to mind? I, you know, I think Farm to Fork. Um, originally, our chef is now our GM. He sat down with the 25 farms around us. He asked them to grow specific crops and he set up distribution systems so they weren't wasting labor. And then our dinner menu changes based on what the farms are bringing us. And we also have a fishmonger who brings us fish and we use their filleting that out. It's kind of cool to watch. Um, and I think that just that connection with the land and how we support uh, the farmers in our area. We support the uh, Jefferson Land Trust and um, really want them to be successful. Uh, it, it's a huge thing to grow food today and, and you know, all the regulations and complications. And, uh, but that's really important to us. And alongside that, we have an award-winning um, wine seller. We um, are a Wine Spectator Award winner. And so you know, just the food experience and then being able to enjoy a really special glass of wine, um, I think is, is something that also helps people to get in that relaxed stage and, you know, have a great time. Sounds good. Well, Diana James is right. We, we have to break away from this peace and serenity and mix things up with a short break to hear from today's spotlight sponsor. And when we come back with our guest, Diana Smelland with Port Ludlow Resort for our hot or not section of the show, we're going to find out what Diana thinks about slipping into the C-suite. Don't walk away. We'll be right back with more of the Shrimp Tank. Sandler Training specializes in ongoing training, coaching, and consulting to help companies increase their top and bottom line results. As a business owner or leader, are you completely frustrated with lack of consistent performance from your salespeople? Concern the team is not putting enough new strong opportunities in the pipeline? Disappointed at your team's inability to create value instead of selling on price? Or fed up with losing valuable margin due to unnecessary price discounting? If the end result of these and other challenges is a roller coaster ride of performance, consistently missed sales forecasts, or stagnant business growth, Sandler may be for a fit for you. Sandler works with sales leaders and their sales team to refine their selling process, put key management processes in place, and improve execution to create sustained, improved performance and results. Sounds like a great company. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we're back on the Shrimp Tank where we interview the best and brightest CEOs and business thought leaders in the greater Puget Sound area and beyond. Uh, I'm your co-host James Alberson and our guest today is Diana Smellen of Port Ludlow Resorts and uh, we're going to move on to our next segment, Hot or Not. Well Diana, you may remember because you were a guest on our show about three years, four years ago I think, actually one, one of our first years. Hot or Not is a segment where James and I are going to pepper you with some questions about business, about life, uh, heck, maybe even about uh, farm to fork. You never know. And you're going to tell us if it's hot or not and why. And at the end, you win absolutely nothing. Uh, I was talking about the C-suite. <laughs> Diana, talk about being an executive. Is it hot or not to be part of an executive mastermind group? Ah, so I would say hot. Um, I'm part of the Puget Sound Excel group. And um, Dan was actually uh, why I started with them. Um, and been with them for oh, quite shucks. a while. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and, uh, you know, the group is great. I think when you're in the C-suite or um, upper management, um, a lot of times, you know, we have the, uh, the doubt, right? Am I doing this okay? Is, is this what I should be doing? Maybe I should be focusing on something else. Um, and you think you're the only one out there that's doing that. So you, then you're feeling like, you know, oh, I'm not making this, I'm not doing it. Um, and it's great to get together with other CEOs and, um, and really understand that all of our issues are very, very similar. And that when they're talking about an issue that we're trying to help them solve or, or coach into, um, you know, what might be the good response, um, you know, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's exactly what I'm dealing with. This is what I, I need to pay attention. Um, and so it's great. I think it, it really helps you belong. The other thing that's great about the Puget Sound Excel group is um, we're very community minded. And um, so it's been great to get more involved with the community, be involved in some of those projects um, and give back um, while we're there. So yeah, uh, it's very hot and I would suggest anybody to do that. All right, uh, hot or not, I, I think this dovetails uh, perfectly with that question, you know, in, in those type of groups you run into, you have a lot of CEOs and, and C people, but also business owners, entrepreneurs, hot or not teaching entrepreneurship in high school. I think that would be really hot. I could have benefited quite a bit from that, um, you know, rather than kind of learning it uh, in later life, even college. Um, and, uh, you know, I love that this program is, is um, you know, educating a uh, younger population. But when I listen to the um, podcast, I'm learning something. So, I, you know, I think that it's been great um, for all ages and all different businesses uh, to listen to your podcast and get something from it. So, Diana, you know, Port Ludlow, the the area, and, and you are also a developer, you're a home developer, you're real, I should say real estate developer. That's part of what, what Port Ludlow is. And I know you have a large community and a lot of them, I guess I would say maybe the, the thought is, is that they're all retired or a bunch of them are retired or uh, they're, you know, in the, and getting close to retirement. So hot or not living in Port Ludlow with a young family. Um, I think, uh, I think it depends on how young, uh, I would say hot because again, it's such a a great environment to bring a family up in, um, you know, 30 miles of trails. There's so much educational. We have an interpretive trail. We have a falls. Um, we have about a hundred school children that live in, uh, what's called the NPR, the master plan resort area. And, um, um, most of them probably attend Chimicum, but we also have a large homeschooled population. And, um, you know, I think, I think for a kid growing up, having woods and, and lots of grass and places to ride my bikes and not having to worry about a ton of cars, sounds pretty heavenly to me. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and I think that, um, you know, the neighbors love it because then you get the generations and um, I just think it's, it's a great mix. So Diana, I- I'm sure that uh, Port Ludlow uh, Resorts is a, a favorite of a lot of your people, a lot of return trips and that sort of thing. Uh, so you get to know some of the people. Here's the question, hot or not, personal relationships with clients or keep it strictly business, hot or not? You know, um, I think, uh, I guess it's, it, I guess it's, how do you define personal, right? Well, you know, not, uh, not too personal. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think it's hot. I think today we want to connect. We want to connect with people. Um, we want to feel like we belong. Um, and, um, you know, I think as a client, um, you know, I want to feel like um, I can call you and have a conversation about just about anything. And, and I think our, our customers do. Um, you know, you're right. Many of them are long-term. We know them well, they know us well. Um, and, uh, many of our employees, like I said, have been long-term. So they've been seeing you for many, many years as you come back and we want our new customers to feel, um, you know, welcome and invited and, um, included. Um, so I do think that it's important. 
You know, Diana, I, I you, you mentioned COVID a little bit in our in our first segment, and I'd be remiss if I didn't come back to this. I have to think if I were you, as as the head of a, an organization that is all about bringing people together, <laughs> is all about hospitality. You know, it's a hotel, it's restaurant, it's golf, it's you know, marina, it's boating, it's all of that. On somewhere around March, I don't know, 7th, 8th, 9th, when the world just literally went, you know, to pieces, sitting in your chair, <laughs> we're not to plead the fifth yet, but what went through your head when everybody started shutting down uh, sports seasons and Broadway and, and everybody, it was all of a sudden, go lock yourself in your, your house and don't go out. What was going through your head? You know, um, it, at first it's a little bit scary and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Um, we sat down as a team, we talked about worst case scenario. We talked about how to keep our employees safe. We bring the outside into the community. How do we keep our community safe? Um, and, you know, I had a lot of really good discussions with the executive team. We made some really tough decisions and moved people to furlough pretty quickly. Um, we ended up having to shut down the golf course for about 40 days, I think it was. And we had to shut down the inn for, um, the hotels didn't have to be shut down, but the restaurant had to. And we didn't think we could support our customers with no food. Um, so we shut down the inn for about 65 days. And, and during that time, really the executive team was here. Most of our other employees were furloughed on unemployment. Um, and, um, you know, it was, uh, it, it was a lot of re, um, rebuilding plants. So we, so that was our first thought. Okay, what's worse, what's best? How do we move forward? We moved quickly. Then we started talking about, okay, how do we keep guests safe? How do we keep the community safe? What kinds of rules are out there? And of course the rules changed every week, right? So, okay, today <laughs> they, we open, they tomorrow sure did. Day. Yeah, golf course. Oh, you can't ride in the same cart. Okay. Oh, you have to wear your mask. Oh, you don't have to wear your mask outside. Don't you know, touch so, the pin. Yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. touch the pin. That's right. Yeah, and I mean, we even have these little stops on the doors. I think we were the first ones to get them, where you put your foot on it and you open the door without even touching the door. So, like in the restrooms, you don't have to touch the restroom door. Um, so, you know, just a lot of um, plan, regroup, figure out what's changed. We came up with um, even plans of, okay, what if one of us catches COVID? What happens? You know, what are we going to do? Who's going to help us? Who did we infect? How far does it have to go? Um, so we even sat down and uh, built some plans like that. And, uh, you know, I have to say, I'm going to knock on some wood here, but, uh, you know, thank goodness um, our community has been extremely um diligent about the rules and what we should do. They were, I think we're the most vaccinated uh, county in the state of Washington at this point. Um, you know, we immediately went into uh, how do we keep everyone safe? And we went into cleaning and all those other kinds of things. Um, and we, uh, within the company, have not had a COVID hit, a case wow. at all, which wow. has been That's amazing. Awesome. And none of our guests that we know of have had COVID. Um, so we've been extremely fortunate and, um, you know, just really uh, diligent on not letting people stop. I write a monthly newsletter. Um, and what I mean by not letting people stop being diligent about it, I, I called it a marathon. I said, we need to run this race and practice for this race and then run this race again and then practice and then run this race again. Um, and we did that and we had employees helps to tell us oh, well, I don't like this, or, oh, this happened and we need to fix this. And so we stubbed our toes and we, you know, recovered and, and got better. Um, and so, uh, you know, it was a lot of planning and a lot of best and worst case scenarios. We did the same with our financial numbers, um, you know, best and worst, what this might look like. Fortunately, uh, I think because we are um, small boutique and it, mostly outside in, in many cases, um, we have been a good place for people to either branch back out and feel comfortable or uh, the place where they want to return to because they feel very comfortable. Sounds good. 
I think we uh, have uh, have come to another commercial break here. You know, we have to get this stuff paid for. J- James, I, I, I was just going to say, why don't you take one more? Why don't you take oh. one more? If you have more question before break, we'll take oh. one more. Okay, I'll, I'll ask one more. It was, uh, it, it kind of, it came to me as you were answering, you know, the one of the signs of a, of a good leader, a true leader, they're always able to uh, take, take lemons and make lemonade, if you will, and that sort of thing. Uh, you talked about a lot of things. Is there one, uh, is there one thing, maybe one uh, silver lining that, that, uh, you, that came out of all this, that maybe a genius idea you had, something that's gonna be lasting? How would you actually, uh, how would you answer that? Is there a silver lining that came out that you found to be uh, something that's going to help you going forward or the, or the resort? You know, it's, it's interesting you ask that because um, there are a lot of good things that have come out of uh, COVID and we say, oh, well, what, what, you know, that was a question to the team. What should we keep? What should we not keep? What's going to change? Um, you know, we love the Zoom. Um, we've been able to shorten meetings, you know, save labor, do those kinds of things um, and allow more people to be included. Um, you know, I think some of our cleaning is going to uh, stay in place. We really enjoy some of the new uh, tools that are available for that. We actually did a room refresh in the middle of this. A lot of our choices were how easy is it to clean? How, you know, how can we make sure that not only do we work through this pandemic, but, you know, future viruses or future things that are going to come our way. Um, so a lot of things we looked at that way. Um, we looked at labor. Labor is an expensive component of any business. Um, you know, are there things that we're doing that we don't need to do or the things we can do better? Um, or maybe, you know, there's, there's things we should just change and bring in a new system. And we did that with systems too. We brought in um, more of the hand, you know, touchless type systems. And we're still working through them. I mean, they're not perfect yet, um, but we'll keep those and continue with that. Well, you know what we're going to keep and continue with? It's taking a short break to hear from our sponsors. And when we come back with our guest, Diana Smellen with Port Ludlow Resort for our famous Plead the Fifth section of the show, we are going to climb inside Diana's earbuds and learn a little bit. So don't walk away. We'll be right back with more of the Shrimp Tank. Plead the Fifth is brought to you by our great sponsors. Ideal Life 360. Cornerstone Financial, First Underwriters Insurance, Kicked Up Sun Newspaper, Port Ludlow Resort, West Bay Auto Parts, Eleven Winery, and Scratch Distillery. Please visit our website at www.shrimptankpodcast.com forward slash Seattle to learn more about these terrific companies. Now back to the show. All right, welcome back to the Shrimp Tank where we interview the best and brightest CEOs and business thought leaders in the greater Puget Sound area and beyond. I'm your co-host James Alberson and today our guest is Diana Smellen of Port Ludlow Resorts. And now the next segment, Plead the Fifth. Diana, you know Plead the Fifth, you only get to do it once. We're gonna still pepper you with some more questions. We might even turn up the heat just a little bit. You never know. You get to plead the fifth once, but only once. And after that, we can ask you really wild questions because we're not on the radio. This is a podcast. We can, James and I can do whatever we want. So, and at the end, you win absolutely nothing. So I mentioned about climbing into your earbuds. I know, I know you're a podcast listener. Plead the fifth, Diana. What is your favorite podcast? Well, of course, the shrimp tank's right there. <laughs> I love the shrimp I- tank. I but knew. So listen. I have, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I, I actually have three that I really listen. Good. To. I was I was wanted to hear the rest. I knew Shrimp Tank topped the charts, but of uh, what else do you listen to? Um, I love Mind Valley. Um, it's you know uh, kind of um, uh, large thinking, um, and uh, they cover anything from meditation, altered states, all kinds of different things, but things I'd never even heard of. So it's interesting. I listen. Um, and learn some things. And then the other one is um, the Model Health Show with Sean Stevenson. And, uh, you know, we're all thinking about our health and, and um, how we can improve it. And um, so that's another one that I listen to quite often. You know, I, I, I like to get some TED Talks. I usually listen to podcasts on the way to work. 
and I usually listen to music or something else or calls on the way home. Uh, so it's a good mix up to my day. Glad to hear somebody. James, has a before you ask your question, yeah. James, before you ask your question, I wanted to share with you that Diana over the years has connected with me to to in, to be introduced to different guests because she's had some different things come up that uh, she's either needed some help or she thought there'd be a good partnership. So Diane has been awesome. So I know she listens to the show. I know she listens. So James, you're up. <laughs> All right, Diana, plead the fifth. You know, in this 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 year, year and a half or whatever it's been of COVID, uh, I'm sure we had a lot of time to to stream shows, to discover shows and that sort of thing. So plead the fifth. What show or shows do you binge watch? Wow, uh, you know, um, uh, so I have always come into the office. I actually never worked from home. And um, so I usually, on a normal typical work day, I get off you know, 5.30 and get home, have dinner and do the dishes and sit down. And it's like, oh, it's almost time for bed. Uh, so I don't watch a lot of TV, honestly. Um, but, it, you know, if I was going to binge watch something, um, it's probably more of like a series. So I like the Equalizers new, but I used to love CSI. Um, I like um, NCIS. I like mysteries, those kinds of things. Um, a lot of times if I get an opportunity, I'll sit down, I'll read a book, um, fiction and nonfiction, just depending on what's happening, um, or I do Sudokos. And, you know, I really like those. So usually I'll sit down and do a couple of those before bed. All right. Now I feel totally worthless just, you know, oh. watching, you know, <laughs> Game of Thrones or, or Breaking Bad <laughs> or whatever. But. I I'll have to break out some more books. All right, Dan, over to you. <laughs> All right. So, Diana, I've taken you out. You're no longer the head of Port Ludlow. You're going to get to start your own business. So you can't you can't do anything related to Port Ludlow Resort or anything we've talked about. But this is a question. What is the hobby that you have that you would turn into a business? So you're going to start all fresh. What, what's the hobby that you have say, I'm going to make that a business. Um, and, and definitely would have to go learn for quite a bit. Uh, but I've always loved photography. Um, oh. you know, I, uh, um, and drones would be really fun now. I think to you know, be able to fly drones and take a bunch of pictures. The picture behind yeah. me, I uh, was actually taken by Brian Deal, who's a, a community member who has an amazing drone. And he's been working with us to get some pictures and everything. So, and if, you know, if I, could, you know, I always wonder, oh, hmm, what if I went into photography instead? And, um, you know, what would that have looked like? But maybe someday, you know, maybe that's chapter. There you two. go. There you go. It's a great <laughs> answer. Okay, great. All right, Diana, next question. And I know this is maybe a general question, but let's see what, what, uh, what comes of it. What do you wish that you knew? I'm sure you're quite wow. knowledgeable, but what do you wish that you knew? <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, hmm. uh, well, I would wish to know what I don't know, right? Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that always key? <laughs> um, let's see. Um, you know, um, one of the things with Port Lund, though, is um, even though we are so close to Seattle, we're so close to Bellevue, Edmonds, um, Tacoma, you know, those areas, um, it's really hard sometimes to be able to get the attention of people to, you know, be that, how do I get heard out of the 10,000 interruptions we get like every minute or something, it's crazy. Um, so, you know, I, I guess if I had, I, I recently, I'm doing more marketing. I have an assistant that's amazing. She does most of the back work, thank goodness. Um, but if I knew, if I knew that exact thing that I should put out there that would drive people um, to the website or you know, people to be aware of Port Ludlow. We have a lot of ambassadors out there who you know, say really nice things and where you should go. Dan's always a great ambassador too. Um, and, uh, uh, but if I knew that, you know, that, that, that spark or that something that could make that happen on a much faster basis, then um, kind of a grassroots 
And, you know, I mean, I don't have millions that I could be like Nike or somebody and go out and sponsor that or do, you know, do different things. So we're doing it really through social media and through um, some targeted marketing and trying to get that awareness and the podcast hopefully uh, will give us some of that awareness too. Well, absolutely. And, and so I have, I, I think this is, we're going to, this could be our last, uh, our last plea, the fifth is where I can't believe time is, is running, but I, I, I want to ask you this. So we're back to doing dinner parties again, COVID's over. Everybody's not, COVID's not over, but back, we're all vaccinated. We're all out. We have a dinner party again. And you're, you find yourself sitting next to somebody at, at the, at the dinner table that you've never met. How do you start a genuine, uh, thoughtful, meaningful conversation with somebody that you don't know at that dinner table? Um, well, uh, first of all, I'm a little bit introverted. So I, I, uh, I, it's usually hard for me to start it. I'm a bit shy about that. But um, I was reading something the other day and I thought this was a great question. And it said, um, what is something you're working on right now that is your great passion? You know, so maybe something along those lines about um, what are they really excited about or, you know, what are they really looking forward to? We can always talk travel. Um, you can always talk the weather. You can always talk COVID probably. <laughs> but, you know, I think something that tells me um, a little more about the person, um, which would be very interesting. And, um, you know, sometimes if it's just general conversation, you don't always remember it. But I think if you were telling me what you're passionate about, I think that would really stick with me. And, and it, it would be interesting to hear the thousands of difference of passions that are out there. That sounds nice, that sounds nice. All right, well, as Dan mentioned, time flies. We're coming to the end of things here. Diana, I wanna thank you for being a guest on The Shrimp Tank. And for those out there who uh, uh, want more information, uh, want to learn more about P uh, Port Ludlow Resorts, want to come and play around a golf with you, whatever it is. Uh, how, do they, how do they get more information? Great. Well, our website is, is a great place to start. It's www.portludlowresort.com. Um, and that has uh, all of our information. You can also uh, sign up for a newsletter, which talks about our wine dinners or tournaments or um, clinics that we've done or different things going on at the marina. Um, and um, you can also get onto our social media, Port Ludlow Resort, or also the Port Ludlow Golf Course. And we're both on Facebook and Instagram. All right. So, so J Diana, thank, thank you so much. James, I don't know if your, your wife golfs, uh, mine does not. So we're oh, going to have to set up a time where our wives will drop them off. They can start drinking wine and we'll go off and we'll tee off. What do, what do you think? I think that's a fantastic idea. Only if Diana can join us. Yeah, yeah I want to there's the deal. <laughs> we got it. We got it all set up. Diana, hey, thanks again, not only for being on the show, but for being a sponsor. Well, our next show is a week from today and we're going to be back at noon. Back at noon, it's our regular time, 12 p.m. Pacific. Join us for lunch on May 19th. Our guest will be Doug Hall with resources for CEOs. I know James knows, knows Doug, Doug and, and I've known Doug for a number of years and he's got some great, uh, well, just as the name says, resources for CEOs. <laughs> You're gonna have to join us to find out. My co-host next week will be the, the Virgin Voyage for Phil Simchich. Uh, in the meantime, please be safe, be well and be prosperous because until next week, the shrimp is back in the tank. So long. I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp.